Tillis. Come in, Tillis. Do you read me? Tillis, are you okay? Chris, I'm, I'm here. Can you locate me? Tillis, we'll transport you to our ship immediately. Tillis, are you all right? I'm okay. Listen, I got some info about this spaceship. I heard it. We all heard her voice. I cannot imagine how devastating the damage would be if an object that size collided with Earth. Okay, this is it. Tell us, on your mark. Confirmed. Destination, ship central core. Full blast. Roger. Right Greetings, I'm Solidus Scully, and welcome to the final part of the Burning Rangers commentary. All recorded in a single day, and now we get a unique change of gameplay. Yes, indeed, we now get to take control of the Burning Rangers spaceship in this, uh... Well, again, as I said in the review, basically Space Harrier by way of Jack 3. So, again, similar to Jack 3, you're pretty much controlling something on a... Like a spherical plane, uh, not really too- well, again, I already see, gave the comparison, but, uh, yeah, again, you can basically shoot some lasers to get to re out of your path, or you can run into it like that, but you are basically kept in the field of play thanks to the, uh, crystal health system, so again, unlike Jack 3, you won't just collide against a wall and have to do it all over again, but instead you'll basically keep in the fray, you got some rockin' music to keep you entertained, and, uh, yeah, you also got some speed boosters to get a degree of speed. It's really fun and actually a very rewarding segment that really does give a bit of tension towards the build-up as we come and rescue Ilya and Tyrus. Tyrus? Iria and Tillus. Ilya and Tyrus? <laughs> Whatever. We also get some pretty good vistas, like, I mean, as you can see out there. We're weaving in between the colony's defenses, seeing a bit of space, seeing a bit of the interior. God damn, this is a really fun segment. It's a little bit short, admittedly, but, uh, again, nice injection of action and really fun to pull off. I apologize for that brooch, I just had a delicious meal and a bit of Pepsi. So, uh, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit hyped tonight. Burning Rangers on the go. Entering the ship's central area. Big and Tillis, you take the corridor to the right. Show and read, use the left one to reach the core. Right here. Chris, go back outside and wait for us there. Okay, good luck to you all. Same as always. We can do it. You can count on us. Okay, everyone. Let's do it! Roger! Oh, I really love this music. Please don't leave us. It's really good. By the way, uh, this also isn't technically the end of the level, it's just the end of the thing. Oh, music, why you go? But yeah, your mission is pretty much just to follow big throughout the level. Dagon, you do still get a bit more platforming, a bit more combat, right before the final segment, but uh, yeah, we're pretty much getting towards the end game right here. And of course, as you can tell, since we are kind of on a collision course to Earth, yet another Sonic parallel, not quite uh, to the degree of, you know, malice that Gerald Robotnik had in Sonic Adventure 2, obviously, but again, still a factor of mankind's mistakes coming to ultimately pay for them, even if it is the result of one man's compassion for his daughter leading to the demise of many. But again, it does also kind of lead into a bit of a thing, like, I mean, does Zillia have psychic powers? What illness did she really have? And, uh, more to the point, was she using the, co the colony itself to communicate with Tillis, or was it just, uh, her own abilities? I mean, I suppose they're really just sort of meaningless questions in the grand scheme of things, but all the same, it's, uh, interesting to think about. Even though we'll probably never get an answer to it. Let's go! Let's go! Yeah, this is pretty much the final segment right before we, uh, Get to a sort of mini-boss fight, actually, which I don't think we've really had- well, mini-boss in quotation marks. I suppose maybe this- you could probably consider this to be, like, similar to the robots you had in the previous two levels, but all the same. Yeah, since then we have this, uh, well, this- I don't even know what this is meant to be. I guess maybe just a regular laser cannon, really, though it seems to have more of a- more of a plant-like motif. So again, I guess maybe this is probably meant to be, like, an extension of the, uh, the plant-like boss, uh, the plant Animorph, I think it's called? The Animorph boss fight in the first level. Except this one actively, you know, shoots projectiles at you rather than just, you know, doing a little sweep of the area. But again, it isn't so challenging because, again, this is pretty much just Tillis meant to take it out. And by the way, Big did say he was gonna take it out for us, but, uh, he's just kinda standing there, so I... Well, I guess maybe he would just want us to save his energy. I mean, he is part cyborg, so maybe he doesn't want to expend his energy capsules? Eh, whatever. Yeah, the point is, basically, the more you attack it, the more angry it gets, but you gotta destroy it so we can get through the door and, uh, well, reconvene with, uh, show and read. But again, basically just, uh, circle around and you should eventually find your path. Hey, and there we go. Ilya's chamber is now free for us to save her, so enjoy the cutscene, dudes and dudettes. So 
before she's inside this thing? But it's too large to transport. How about activating two transport units simultaneously? Okay, use mine. Okay, mine's ready too. They're set. Ready. Coordinate set! Location confirmed. Activating the devices. Transport complete. Yeah! You should go now. We'll stop it here. Show and I can take care of things here. Go, Tillis, go! Okay, I'll take care of it. And now it's time for the final boss territory. Now that Iria's- Iria? God damn it, I keep on going back and forth on her name. Iria's just easy to pronounce, but uh, Ilya is what the game calls her, so... I guess to kind of go back on my previous part in the last part, uh, call it whatever you feel like. Nomad, Vagabond, call me what you will. When the road becomes my bride, I am filled with all but pride. I don't even know if those are the lyrics. It doesn't keep me satisfied. Okay, now we're pretty much at the final boss. That was literally just the most filler commentary I think I've ever done. I'm kind of embarrassed, to be honest. By the way, I s again, this might be me reaching a little bit, but I swear to God Sonic Force has had a boss similar to this. But again, well, it's basically, it's pretty much like um uh, the similar boss fight from Sonic 3, except uh, with lasers, really. You know, the uh, computer security core you fought in the Death Egg? Well, it's less platform-based and more with, uh, well, horizontal lasers. I don't know. But again, this, uh, yeah, this isn't the final challenge. If you thought this was, then, uh, you are sadly mistaken. For the true core of the enemy is about to be revealed. Also, some very peppy 90s-esque music. And the environment becomes revealed as we enter this fucking Final Fantasy boss fight all of a sudden. Oh my god. And here we are, Final Fantasy boss by way of Sonic the Hedgehog. By the way, if I can just credit um, Naoto Oshima and the art designs team for the umpteenth time, uh, the design of the final boss is actually really fucking cool. And again, it, it's also got a lot of uh, attack patterns and, uh, well, the power to back it up. Like again, basically you're gonna destroy the two cores, aim your pulse rifle at the thing, and go to town on it. Again, it does regenerate rather quickly, so again, you gotta really be on the ball. And of course, you're also gonna be in tandem with uh, dodging the flame pillars, tornado flames, and uh, well again, the uh, bombs that detonate a little shockwave. So yeah, you've got a lot to dodge and avoid, and this boss fight just doesn't let up for a second, man. This will actually take you a fair bit of time, so, like, I mean, the bosses do end on their strongest note, and, uh, it's really tense and engaging. Also, get a load of the background. I mean, I know it's hard to see with all the flames and shit, but, uh, god damn, this is fucking trippy and freaky as hell, man. It kind of reminds me of the, uh, that little platforming segment at the end of, um, one of the end of, uh, during the Nightmare segments of the original Max Payne, where you're just sort of traversing around on those beams. I mean, the platforming section was difficult as hell, especially in the PS2 version, but... God damn, it's freaky, man. Actually, it also kind of reminds me of the um the third Doctor credits of Doctor Who, actually, that had the red vibes. I don't know. It's really cool, but at the same time, it also contrasts nicely with the uh, the blue tinted design of you know the platform and the boss itself. I don't know. Like, I mean, it's a nice use of color grading. I mean, the I mean the boss arena does sort of fade around every now and again, which. Uh, Again, it's probably just there to give it a bit of visual spice, but again, it's really cool how they managed to get so many colors on display and keep the boss in focus. I mean, a testament to Sonic Team's art design and, uh, well, pretty much their motion designers, really. So, yeah. By the way, I really do have to wonder, like, what exactly Ilya's father is thinking right now. I mean, I know the computer mainframe is corrupted and all that, but, uh, hmm. It does kind of make me wonder what would have happened if we had like a more of a voice acting presence for this computer mainframe. How it would have been portrayed. Well, again, I guess it probably portrays itself more through its actions rather than any spoken dialogue, but... I don't know, it's interesting if we could have gotten some like, horrific Joe Robotnik-esque implications about what it's what it was willing to do to protect Ilya. I don't know, food for thought I guess, and something that I guess I'd probably double down on when it came to developing Sonic Adventure 2, which... It can took all these concepts to a much darker extreme. But we are reaching the end of the game right now. 
And now with time to finish this. And I will say right now, the shockwaves will probably be the most damaging attack, but alas, the boss is finally defeated. And enjoy your victory. It looks like the shield is gone. Reed, prepare for transport now. Shoot, I can't. There's a huge magnetic storm and I can't synchronize the coordinates. How can this be? Chris, take a look at the monitor. Prepare to abort. But what, what? Reed, there's nothing we can do. Tillis. I'm back home. You did a remarkable job by yourself. You did really well. You made it back. Cool. And that, my dear friends, was Burning Rangers for the Sega Saturn, and, uh... Sega Saturn. This was never ported anywhere else. Why, Sega? Do you hate money? Do you hate your franchises so very much? Uh, I'm being facetious, obviously. Again, Burning Rangers, I've already said all that I needed to in the review, and I'm gonna elucidate a little bit more on this. By the way, I swear to god Sonic Mania pays like a nod to this song in Titanic Monarch. Cause like, I mean, if you listen to the, um... Uh, like, I think of like, the chorus of uh, Titanic Monarch's song, and then compare it to the opening of this song right here with the I don't know why, I just smile. I swear to god the melody at the very least is given a nod in Sonic Mania, but that might just be me reaching, because... I think while Mania was willing to pay lots, uh, lots of nods and attentions to the 2D games and, like, uh, stuff on uh, the Mega Drive, I don't know if it was doing that in regards to the Saturn stuff. Well, I mean, besides the special stages, but anyway, that's completely off-topic. This is actually a really sweet ending theme, by the way. It actually has two different vocal variants, as well as the opening theme of the game. Uh, there is a Japanese variant which uses Japanese lyrics, and uh, there is another variant that uses English lyrics. And the same goes for I Just Smile. I believe uh, Tomoko Sasaki voices the Japanese uh, version of I Just Smile, whereas this one here is done by uh, Pamela Driggs, I believe. Who oh, and again, I might be misremembering here, but I think she might have actually had some credits as, uh... As something to do with, like, the localization on, uh, the Mega Drive era Sonic games? I don't know, just kinda goes to show how far you can go. Kinda like how, uh, Donna Burke was Angela Orozco in Silent Hill 2, and eventually had, uh, vocal credits on Metal Gear Solid 5 for, uh, one of the songs. But yeah, as I pointed out before, we also get a Where Are They Now, uh, slideshow of photographs. I believe this is Tillis actually returning to, um, uh, the guy who constructed the flowers, because again, we do get to see bits and pieces of elements that they traverse to all throughout the levels, and getting a bit of closure, I guess. And also getting a few bios here and there that you can also take a look at in the manual. Also seeing them in their casual outfits, which, uh, look really sweet. I don't know. It's nice to see the Burning Rangers in more casual settings, and really brings a game to a, a rather nice close. Oh, I've got a uh, meow cat. I don't know. It's fucking. I don't know really. I don't really know who's the credit for the story here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Yuji Nakam probably had the most to do with this. But again, I can't really. I can't really say too much to be certain on that. But again, this game is just. It's incredibly sweet. I love this game. And I just. I really would have loved a sequel, but. Sadly, it wasn't meant to be, and again, I, since we got a lot of time, I might as well detail why, but first of all, before we do any of that, uh, Ilya is now a Burning Ranger. That is cool, I would have loved to have seen a sequel with her and the team, but sadly, not meant to be. And also, the actually very briefest flash of Chris in her alternate outfit. Looks pretty sweet, and she also has like one of those uh, health crystals as one of her earrings. Really interesting and quite sweet. 
Also, was this scene here with, um, uh, Ilya beneath the tree meant to imply that her father died? If so, that is actually quite tragic, but, uh... Hmm, I guess something maybe a more story expanded Burning Rangers possibly could have elaborated on? Or maybe something cut during the translation that didn't quite make it to, to muster, like... Uh... You know, Mr. Klein was getting old, he couldn't quite see his daughter's illness to out, or at least to find a cure? That's a very good question, but, uh, I guess we'll never know. Anyway, I guess um, I might as well deal tell why Burning Rain just didn't really get a sequel. Basically, it was 1998, uh, Faith in the Sadden was pretty much put in the kibosh by 1997. I think by its western department, because I mean, the Sadden was actually doing relatively well when it came to JRPGs and, uh, well, a few ports here and there, but uh, in the West, not so much, especially considering the fact that the PlayStation N64 and uh, the PC were kind of kicking ass and taking names around that time, so... Yeah, basically, well, the Dreamcast was pretty much the focus, everybody was looking forward to more Sonic the Hedgehog because, well, that was pretty much the main mascot, and for as intriguing as games like Knights or Panzer Dragoon were, they weren't exactly system sellers, so... Yeah, Sonic Adventure was pretty much the focus, it was heavily advertised in the Dreamcast marketing campaign. And while the Dreamcast wouldn't come out in the West until 1999, this was... I think Burning Rangers was one of five... Uh, five of the last games released for the Sega Saturn in 1998, so... Yeah, lack of faith, uh, the fact that a new console was on the horizon, and... Really? It was just a very sad state of affairs that just meant that we wouldn't get a Burning Rangers sequel. There was reportedly one in development, I believe, in the early 2000s, but, uh... I don't know, I guess due to relative lack of interest or the fact that the game didn't do very well commercially, basically meant that we got nothing except for a, a quest event of Fantasy Star Online. And I believe Fantasy Star Online 2, I think, but I can't really confirm that because I haven't played that game yet. But again, we also got a few references here in the uh, Sega All Stars Racing and Shadow the Hedgehog especially. But apart from that, nothing. Though there is one thing, and in terms of more recent stuff, again, I did mention a couple of parts ago, uh, that we did actually ha have the, uh, I think it was like a fan remake in Unreal Engine or Unity Engine or something or other, that basically showcased what Burning Rangers could look like if given a bit of a spiffy up res, and it looks pretty sweet. From what I've seen, it plays pretty fine. And I mean, given how Sega is a lot more receptive towards, like, fan ideas and stuff, more than they used to be back in the 2000s, I don't know. Maybe, just maybe, it might be enough to, you know, give Burning Rangers a bit more of an oppress. Again, it's a fucking long shot and I sincerely doubt it will happen from my more realistic perspective, but... Again, you never know. Like, I mean, I don't think it's too big of a risk to port Burning Rangers towards more modern systems like the PS5 and Xbox Series X. You got nothing to lose, I'm pretty sure consoles nowadays can handle the Sega Saturn's... Uh, capabilities, and even if the emulation is a bit shoddy, it's... Again, it's not quite as difficult to emulate as, like, say, I don't know, 32X games or anything, so... Really, what's the harm in doing so? And even in that case, it, like, if it, if it is too difficult, find, like, a fan to port it? I don't know, there are several ways that I think they could have solved the Burning Rangers situation while giving the series a bit more life. Or at the very least, preserving it so that future generations have an opportunity to play it. Again, like, I mean... As I said in the review, and I will continue to say to my dying days, this is a game that shouldn't be left into the annals of history. This game should be preserved for people to play it. Again, as I keep on saying, Sega. Sega Saturn Collection. If you have to, port games like Sonic R or, you know, 3D Blast, the Saturn version. Or hell, even get a few other games like, you know, Resident Evil or Tomb Raider or Gex for the Saturn versions of those. Uh, Mega Man 8 or something. Again, it could help. Uh, but regardless of such, I'm solid Scully, keep new metal, and, uh... I'm going to cry myself to sleep that we have no Burning Rangers 2. Catch it later.